In this video, I want to go over some of what I think of as the ABCs of poker programming, and they're how to use hand evaluators, and also how they're used internally with lookup tables and things like that, because we're going to have to use some of these techniques to create feature vectors for the clustering part of the program. One thing almost all poker programs do is they map the 52 individual cards in the deck to the integers from 0 to 51. And you can see here on this top row we have the suits, so that's club, diamond, heart, spade in alphabetical order. And the first column just has the ranks of the cards. And you can see that it just wraps around as you use up the four suits for each card. And the benefit of doing it this way is that you're able to use strings to represent cards for convenience when you're dealing with APIs and things like that. So here we have um, 10 of spades, which is going to end up mapping to the number 35. And this is actually out of the code base by Henry R. Lee, the poker hand evaluator. And all you have to do to generate these numbers is you, uh, I guess he does it by looking up the, the number in, the, um, in this map that he has up here. You multiply by 4, and then you add an offset for whatever the suit is. And then once you have these numbers, it's really easy to uh, recover the the rank and the suit for any operations you need to do. All you have to do is divide by four, and this is the uh, the floor division. And then you can also use the you can use mod four to recover the suit of the individual card. And the benefit of having these numbers is you can then use different poker libraries where you pass in the numbers to get the uh, the hand strength. So you can compare two hands and see who's going to win at showdown. And I think with the Henry R. Lee poker hand evaluator, at least in the Python part, it actually does take strings, but internally it actually just maps those to the to the numbers that we were just looking at. And different libraries, like this one's a discounted counterfactual regret minimization um, implementation, they just expect that you would use uh, the numbers to um, for the different hole cards and the board cards. You can see here this function's actually getting the hand value using the 2 plus 2 hand evaluator method. So the way the hand evaluators work and with um, for the most part is you feed in these numbers and then it just feed, gives you back a value. And the way to compare two hands is just whatever returns a higher value is the hand that wins. Now would be a good time to introduce the different hand evaluators. And I think the easiest one to get started with is the Cactus Kev hand evaluator. And that's because it's only a five card hand evaluator, which is easier to implement than um, when you have seven cards or more for something like Potlum and Omaha. And it also has this web page where he describes how it works and it's a relatively short description. And the basic gist of how it works is he uses this representation of individual cards where he uses um, the bits basically within a number. So this is four bytes here, each separated by uh, this like yellow line here. And the idea is that, so like if it's a, a king, he ends up setting just this one bit. So this right here represents the, the king of diamonds. And he sets the one here because it's a king. And then he does the same thing or similar thing for the suits of the um, for what the suit of the card is. So he sets a one here because it's a diamond. And then for the, this represents the rank of the card. So this is um, the number 11 in binary for the, uh, because it's a king and that's the, the rank number. And one thing he does that's also kind of unique to his hand evaluator is he uses a prime number for each rank of the cards. And he does that because that way you can multiply the prime numbers together for a five card hand and you get a unique number and you don't have to worry about the ordering. But that doesn't really matter so much for our use case and you can read about it at his website. The basic thing you want to walk away with is that you can represent a card using a, um, an integer or just four bytes and whatever data type. It doesn't really matter because what you're actually concerned about is what bits are set in the uh, in the actual bytes, in the underlying bytes, and then you can do different operations using these cards, bitwise operations, which makes things way easier than if you tried to implement this in some other way. So you can imagine that if you have five cards and you want to determine whether you have a flush, all you have to do is and all the cards together, 
and then you inspect these byte, these bits that represent the suits. And if you have five cards that are all one suit, then the ending um, bits are only going to have a single bit set. And so that way you can just and all your cards together and then do some type of inspection of the result and figure out if you have a flush. And similarly, for evaluating whether you have a straight, what you can do is isolate the bits that represent the rank of the card. And you can do that by either using a, a mask or you can just shift all of the, uh, the bytes that you're not concerned with off of the, uh, the number that you're looking at. And you do that for each card. And then you can do a binary OR on all the cards. And if you end up with a number that has five sequential bits set, you know that you have a straight. And you can check that by just comparing with um, a number that's five bits. You do a binary AND and see if it's equal to the, to the same thing after you do the operation. And you can basically just kind of slide that along by, uh, by doing a shift operation in a, in a for loop. And the same thing applies for straight draws, where the, uh, the pattern you're looking for for like an open-ended straight draw would just be four sequential bits, and a gut shot would be five bits with a uh, with one of the, with a zero in between. So there's actually three different possible uh, bit masks you would have to check. And similarly, with a double gut shot, it has its own little pattern that you would have to check. And this is a pretty simple thing to implement. You basically just slide the the original part of the hand where you ord all of them together, and you're just comparing it at the beginning of the uh, of the binary number, and you just go all along that uh, that resulting number, checking if the uh, the numbers match up. We're going to use similar techniques to extract feature vectors that we're then going to use to do clustering on, so we can have. Um, different buckets of hands on the flop turn in the river. But in practice, real hand evaluators, they don't do this type of thing on the fly to figure out which, what value your hand has. They actually do all that ahead of time, and they use a method called um, lookup tables. And it's, I think the best description of it is on, um, on the documentation of the, uh, the poker hand evaluator repo that I've linked previously. And the gist of the way this works is we use a, uh, we use 52 bits, one for each card, and then this is a seven card hand, so we know that seven of the bits are going to be set. And we want to use that as a key to look up in a table some type of pre-computed value. So what they do is they, they iterate through all the possible seven card hands um, in order because we know the, the strength of the hand just in a, you know, it'll do like the, the straight flushes first and then the four of the kinds and then, then full houses, etc and we fill up the table and the, the difficulty is mapping this large number into an index in, in, the, um, in the lookup table. And the way it actually works ends up being pretty complicated. It uses a dynamic programming algorithm. But the basic idea, I think all you really need to walk away knowing is that if you have some type of representation of, um, of something you want to store in a lookup table and and you have and the, the way to identify it is just by bit set, and you know that there's a fixed number of bits that you can then use a lookup table. Because really, if we had to use all these numbers from um, 0 to 2 to the 52, that's way too big. But because we know that only 7 of those bits are set, we know that there's actually only uh, 52 choose 7 possible, um, possible combinations, which is actually small enough that we can make a lookup table for that thing. And within this um, this repo, it ends up just being a. It's one of the functions. Uh, I'm blanking on what it's called actually, but basically you feed it this number, and it tells you what the index is within a lookup table of the size 52 choose 7. And it also does a similar thing where instead of using a binary representation, um, what we do is we use bits just for um, the the ranks of the cards and instead of using binary we have the numbers from 0 to 4 which represents how many cards we're holding so here this is two pair it's uh, because we have two aces and two fives and this is four of a kind because we have four eights and here because they're all ones that means that we don't have any pairs so we have ace high and there's a similar algorithm where um, it's basically the same idea you feed it 
an array of numbers like this, and it'll tell you the, the index in a table that you can then use to store the value. So you can pre-compute whatever the value of this two pair is and put it into a, a table, and you just use this as the key. And that way, at runtime, when you see this, you just look up the value in the uh, in the table instead of having to do, you know, some complicated thing where you're using bitwise operations to see if you have a pair or a flush or a straight or whatever. And uh, that's how it's done within their uh, within this hand evaluator, which is why it's extremely fast. And so the reason I went over this lookup table stuff is because I think it might come in handy in the future because performance is always going to be an issue when we're um, trying to do counterfactual regret minimization because the algorithm has to do so many passes over the over the uh, the, the graph or the tree. And uh, and so really the ultimate goal of what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to figure out how to cluster different hands on the flop turn and river. And I originally, actually it was like three years ago, I was working on this um, potential aware abstractions method and I ended up giving up <laughs> for like three years. I didn't touch anything poker related because even though I ended up implementing everything correctly, and I even converted the Python code into Cython, which is like a sort of C Python hybrid that runs fast. It was still just way too slow and also which meant that I would have had to use lookup tables to store the the values that I found from the from that method. And um and so basically what I think I need to do is instead of using this like advanced technique, I think we just need to kind of do something really simple with uh basically feature construction. So basically with clustering, you just have like a, a vector of numbers, or you can also have categorical data in it, and you just um, you just do a, a pretty simple algorithm on it in order to group things together. And um, and so I think if we just keep like piling on the features, like so, if we have like say it'll say like what the the high card is, whether we have a flush draw, backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw, like I think if we just keep piling up on those things, we might be able to get a better um, a better bucketing outcome than we have with the uh, the potential aware abstractions where from my tests with it, it seems like you have to have just like thousands of buckets in order to have meaningful groupings because when I did it with small numbers, with a small number of buckets, I think the problem is that it was like it put just as much effort into distinguishing between the lower end of your hands where it doesn't actually matter as it does at the higher end where it really matters. And so I think like a more human approach is probably going to work better, although I might have to walk that back. It might be a complete failure, but I think that's what I'm going to do in the next video um, or possibly do the uh, the CFR on toy games. We'll see. So um, if you like this, like and subscribe, and uh, I'll try to get that video out sooner rather than later.